Welcome to today's show studio live panel discussion. In these discussions, experts from across the industry discuss, debate, the most important shows of the season. Today, we'll be discussing Diesel Spring Summer 22. My name is MC Hill, and I'm a critic for Show Studio. Why don't we go around our respective bubbles for an IMIB so our audiences can put names to analysis? Um, I can, can I start? Yeah. Uh, my name is Dominique Zimana. Uh, I'm a journalist. Uh, I also have a podcast called The Most. Um, very excited about today. I've already interviewed Glenn a couple of times. Um, so I was really happy uh, to be invited to um, this panel today. Um, I also write a little bit for uh, the Momu Antwerp Fashion Museum web website, uh, among uh, numerous other publications and platforms. Uh, so great having you, Dominique. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. Sui? Uh oh. Uh, my name is Zoe Gleaves. I am a DJ, I am a drag queen, and I'm also the head of fashion and beauty at his studio, which is a creative direction company that creative directs musicians and also works a little bit in fashion too. Nice. And best for last, Rona. I'm Rona Zuma. I'm a fashion stylist, a creative director, and the editor in chief of an indie publication called Third Magazine. Um, and we're all about celebrating fashion, arts and culture, but connecting it to society, amplifying diverse perspectives, and also those of talents from marginalized backgrounds. Nice. Okay, so I guess for audience sake, let's kind of frame the film and for audience who hasn't seen it, deepest apologies for spoilers. So the, the spring summer 22 film was made with British director Frank LeBon and scored by British electronic producer Leon Feinhall and the creative director for Diesel is Glenn Martins, as we said, and he's from Bruges in Belgium. So we kind of have like a cross national team effort to kind of dust off an Italian denim icon. Now the film frames our protagonist, Ella Snyder, inside a, a four part fever dream through surreal environments. It starts with a house party, then moves on to nonstop, well, to kind of a stop motion street style panorama. Then we see an elevator actually transform into a catwalk. Lastly, the doors open to a red planet that Glenn Martins told us was Mars, basically, it's Mars. And it's it's a take on Diesel's history that's neither asleep nor awake, but it certainly got a rise, I think, out of all of us. So what did we think about the film? I really loved the film. I thought it was interesting just because um, I think our protagonist is almost walking for it, like a lot of us may walk for our first parties after lockdown. Um, and I thought like a party and that's like the spirit of like, like, you know, enjoyment and joy um, was just a nice place to start. And all, all these moments of connection that you have in the film, I feel like you just notice them more just because of the last couple of months. So I thought it was a really interesting take. It was also kind of very grounded in like, you know, if you like think about the section where she's just running through the streets, it's really grounded in the everyday, um, which I think was a nice ode to what Diesel was about. So I thought it interesting, like, um, through the use of space, how there's a connection going on to like the attitude or the energy of the brand. Absolutely. I totally agree. I think that there was something, um, it was really, really nice to see hustle and bustle because I feel like so much of what we've seen in terms of like fashion imagery has, and you know, rightly so, has been based on the fact that we have been shut indoors for so long. And I think that's important. And then a lot of the stuff that we have seen together in terms of sort of like crowd scenes and groups of people have been in studio. So you kind of get a sense that, you know, controlled environments have been taking place for a while. Whereas this is at least a kind of cinematic glimpse of what, world, what the world kind of outside looks like again. And that feels quite refreshing. Um, so, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm a kind of a sci-fi uh, freak anyway. So anything that takes place say, on Mars, I'm already kind of <laughs> interested in. So yeah, I really liked it. Nice. Yeah, for, for me, it was um, really great to see immediately, like um, Glenn has really thought this through together with the entire team. He doesn't do things just for the sake of it. So. The fact that they had to show a lot of looks, the fact that it was the first show, his first full collection for this 
huge brand with this huge heritage, um, but then immediately in that first look or in the in Ella's look, um, you could see his signature, but also Diesel's signature. Well, or you could recognize it at the as Diesel. So for me, that was really really great and also really smart to like section it into four different parts mm -hmm. because i've i've heard the critique that maybe the final two parts or the final part was maybe a little bit too much but then i'm thinking like yeah this way he could show the sustainability but and then he immediately did it in a dramatic way also very glenn um, there's always some drama to it. There's always um, some quirkiness to it. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I really loved it. And um, I think it's an, an amazing effort, yeah, especially for a first full collection. And the fact that there are so many looks, of course, is because oh, yeah. um, it was on our fact file, but what was it, 500 stores to fill? um something like that so it's it's a it's a lot it's a lot um dominic you're, you're speaking glowingly of of part four of the film the the, the mars portion with kind of the responsible living moniker mm -hmm. guiding everything. what were some of our our favorite parts did, did any did any of you have a, a favorite specific part one through four so we Rona. Um, <laughs> I feel like I could actually, I think that I could, I don't necessarily have a favorite part, but I think this lift sequence, the one that we're kind of watching right now, I'd actually probably say was maybe the weakest. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably say it's the one that I'm not as sure of. I think one of the things that was really, that I've been really drawn to about all of these clothes mm -hmm. is that um, even though they're obviously kind of cross-referencing and kind of uh, re-showcasing a lot of the process denim that we have come to really enjoy again and that people have been really trying to seek out again. There is a um, kind of campiness about that process denim, which is the reason why so many people enjoy it and the reason why so many people gravitate to it. And I feel like there's something very, um, I don't want to say clinical, but there's something very fashion about a load of beautiful models walking through a corridor in a lift, yeah. uh, which, I feel like could have been made maybe slightly more carefree or if they were going to kind of go down the whole sort of fashion thing it's like well then like do it but like do it knowingly do you know what I mean yeah. whereas there's something it just seemed kind of cool for cool's sake that yeah. section which I wasn't as into especially with the content of the clothes you know kind of like pink satins and blue satins and like cross wired like you know diamantes that to me kind of speaks to something which feels slightly more um carefree so okay. I would say that Right. I'm almost going to be like devil's advocate now, Zoe, because I think I'm <laughs> going to say I like I think the stylist in me really enjoyed just being able to see things clearly. If yeah. You know what I mean? To see the looks clearly in that part. Um, so I, I get what you mean. I think artistic direction wise is probably the most normal to a, a, a typical runway, isn't it? That section. But there was something quite nice of just actually being able to like instead of see glimpses of the looks, just be like, oh, that and that. OK, yeah, I see. Sure. Yeah, that, that was also where I saw that um, that ruched uh, dress for the first time. There's this denim dress that that is, um, yeah, that has this this ruched effect or this nowadays they're calling it this kind of bubble popcorn um, effect with the stitches. Uh, super beautiful, but you could also, and I think that maybe that is also why they filmed it like that because you could see the sides of a lot of the denim trousers as well. Yes. Um, so you could see the sips and when he does double cuffs or when he does uh, the asymmetric thing. Um, so again, I think, I, I agree. Uh, I think it was more for that sake, which doesn't mean that it couldn't have been approached differently, but I, I, I got why they did it like that. And I really enjoyed um looking at pieces um a bit closer without cameras moving and people um crossing each other so yeah no for sure i mean i think obviously it's like in absence of a show mm. 
and mm. you know and actually wanting to see I can imagine as a stylist sure. you know kind of wanting to see things moving as well as seeing things static I think you're you know obviously you're so right you know kind of seeing things in that way is super duper helpful I completely agree mm. I think for me the, the because I I agree it's it's four parts so let's pick our favorite let's pick our least favorite so for me maybe that was outside um the the urban setting as they called it um uh but still I think I think so many of the pieces are are just fantastic and and um and they have a lot of ease which I thought because I thought that the um the red tag um collection that the capsule collection that glenn did before um for diesel as kind of this first um yeah this first collaboration i i thought it was amazing but it did look um it didn't look of course as effortless as the, as this one um it felt, it felt maybe as, more over design dominique you might say it, it felt more like why project mm -hmm. kind of washed with denim yeah and some some pieces felt a bit heavy as well and that's kind of what um i think diesel over the years in 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 on different levels there was this kind of of, of trying too hard um <laughs> on many fronts um and and i think that with this film i i think they well, switch switch around is, is 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 difficult to say, but but um, I think they're on a really good path. Um, I kind of got that vibe from the '90s again. Um, as I said before, we started to go live. Uh, I was clubbing in the '90s, uh, late '90s. Um, so and and Diesel was one of those brands uh, that you had to wear. I was so overjoyed to see those fitted Bermudas as well, like these longer shorts um, that my uh, that one of my cousins used to wear all the time that I was so jealous of. Uh, <laughs> because uh, everyone kept saying like, oh yeah, but D uh, Diesel was one of these brands that was affordable, but it, it wasn't that affordable back in the 90s. Um, but that's also because I think it was one of the, the higher price points because um, all of the high-end brands weren't that global or that that like um just you 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 wouldn't just walk into a gucci store and then now it's now it's kind of a um everyone's comparing those two and when you compare it to those prices to the, yeah. to the high-end prices of course it's more um it's more it's more affordable but um but yeah i was i was i i thought that there's some really great pieces even if that sequence wasn't um i didn't care for it that much i i was still looking at all the clothes and the long jackets and i could go on and on so <laughs> someone else should take it over take it from here ron or zui how did how did you feel about the the street scene which you know personally i felt was a, a very real diesel thing it felt the most like mm, what, what what this whole thing is about that they do what, what did either of you think of of, of, of the second part I think actually that was probably my favorite part as well. I think just because just that essence of like being liberated really comes through strongly mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And um, it just feels so, even though she's running through the streets and she's like going for it, but it just feels so casual and sincere. Like I, I love the part where I think they've got it on their Instagram. We just had it on the screen not too long ago where the mo models just staring back, you know, these really subtle details that you do in day to day life. You might meet someone in the street, you stop, you're talking. Do you know what I mean? How that's all magnified and you're forced to look. I quite, um, I, I think I really enjoyed that, that, that moment. Brilliant. Sure. I mean, again, it's, it's what I have to remind myself as well, that obviously this is kind of like the first, collection that we're seeing mm. so obviously whenever a designer kind of takes hold of a new um of a new brand there's uh the brief is in a way quite a general one you know you have to kind of you you have to kind of appeal to quite a broad range of people while still kind of balancing a lot of different things at the same time and I feel like he really did that and I feel like you know this sort of sequence made sense in a way it kind of reminded me of some of the still ad campaigns from the 90s kind of come to life you know a lot of those ad campaigns were kind of full of movement full of energy again 
and they were quite irreverent. And going back to the corridor a little bit, just in the sense that, like, perhaps irreverence was something that um, felt like it was missing in this, but I'm not but not necessarily saying that it might not appear in the future because I feel like a maybe irreverence on the first round might again have uh, been too risky. Um, but no, I, you know, I mean, I really enjoyed it. It was, um, yeah, it looks beautiful. And I think the clothes looked really nice. Yeah. Violet, if you could, would you, would you pull up the Autumn Winter 04 campaign just to kind of drive the, the, the second part home? Panel, take a look at take a look at this imagery. This was, you know, my personally just my favorite diesel campaign ever. And it was an interactive thing where if you go to their website, you click on any of the any any of the cells that you see, and then you get a mini film out of it. And you, you see the visuals kind of match what we saw from the film. And Zoe, we were seeing before we started, and Zoe, you were talking about an idea of getting it right and an, an idea of how correct this felt. Like even if you don't know what this is. It, it feels it feels familiar. Mm. And so I think just as, as we look at these visuals along with the the second part of the film, we do see that yeah, Galen has an understanding of, of of archive. He definitely knows how to edit. Mm. He definitely knows how to like curate and 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 make it modern. Well, this is a conversation that I actually hear a lot of people talking about right now, which is, you know, thinking about a brand like Dolce & Gabbana, who, let's be honest, are fairly washed at this point. But if they were like, if they were smart, perhaps, you know, you kind of, you look at what people are wearing and you look at what people are referencing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were talking a little bit about Blue Marine as well. You yeah. know, a lot of these, especially it feels like a lot of these Italian brands are kind of relaunching and re-releasing and to me I think it makes sense for this moment that we're in right now for brands to be re-releasing key pieces or to be re-releasing archival pieces or pieces that people are coveting that people want you know thinking about people like Dolce & Gabbana if Dolce & Gabbana did a collection or kind of did a re-release of kind of 25 key pieces I think it would be wildly popular even if they are you know um kind of blacklisted right now for, you know, how they have behaved in the past. I feel like even that would be a kind of a tool for rejuvenation. And I think what Diesel has done here is incredibly smart because what they have done is they have found the right person to tap into um, how a lot of people want to dress. And it, it's kind of bizarre because it feels so current to the millimeter. Like it doesn't feel like next season or the season after, it feels like on this very day, it feels incredibly relevant you know I mean literally like look at the color of the jeans that I'm wearing today like they're literally the same from like I don't know like look eight look nine like it feels very very um it feels very on the nose for how people want to dress right yeah. and so yeah no I think it's I think it's been masterfully done actually Dominique yeah. oh I'm so sorry Sorry, I was just gonna say I thought it, it was amazing how he managed to do so much <laughs> denim on denim and not mm. make it feel like mm. just so uh nostalgic so like early 2000s you know yeah. what i mean and a bit like faux pas you could almost say too like um so I, I was obviously you know that it's part of diesel's dna though as a brand isn't it and it's part of what they do and they, what they do masterfully well so i think glenn's has um done a wonderful job of almost bringing in what he does with Y Project, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. which is the clothes are very sculpt like sculptural. Um, there's lots of like bias cuts and like cutouts that sometimes feel, if not like, not salacious, but sexy, but maybe the sort of sexy that's for your own gaze, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's the sort of stuff that like young people, and I think Diesel is a brand that does market itself a lot to like very young, amazing international people want to wear so I just think it was like a great way of doing like a multitude of things without you know being traditional following showing that you're following in the footsteps of what the brand's already done bringing yourself in and also making it relevant to what people want today absolutely Rana. absolutely I love what you just said about um that it was sexy but almost for your own gaze because that's exactly what it was and that's kind of what it felt like um in the 90s when you went clubbing as well when you were wearing stuff like that it didn't feel yeah. super salacious or super that you were like everything hanging out it was but the thing is is that glenn he brought his chanties do you know the chanties that that's like um chin uh panties so the high cut mm -hmm. little things that he it's it's in the um, 
in the overview of the looks, um, like just a lookbook, it's number two. So it's like immediately like Glenn Martin's in there. I think it's I think it's number two. And yeah, you see, um, so that one, and it's 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 like you said, it's 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 sexy, but it's um, it feels like the pe the person that's wearing it is in control of it, and that's that's kind of um, what I really loved in the film as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, you're kind of fascinated with an idea of interconnected lives, class strata be damned. Did, did you, Rona, did you as well, Zoe, did you, did you find a strong identity with this reinterpretation of kind of a democratic lifestyle and that so that, that, that for a successful living like moniker? So um, do you mean, I think it's, it's kind of ironic as well, meant in an ironic way as well, I think. Um, I, I don't think we should look at it as, as this mantra, um, mm. uh, but more in a sense like uh, whatever you do, just live your life and, and that's the only way to be actually go go for it and that's the only way to be happy um but i i i, I don't think that um that it's meant in the in this really serious kind of way no like yeah, it, it doesn't really feel restrictive like you 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 mm. can you can you can relate and identify with these clothes and that's what i was mm. trying to trying to articulate and i think it kind of um nicely links to what diesel wants to represent as well if you know what i mean it's just for living in a weird way it's like successful living so i think it was it's an interesting choice i i did think about it when i was watching the film and i remember feeling in a weird way whether whether i was being like short changed because i think a lot of the time when you talk about this whole idea of like success or you're trying to learn something you know what i mean it's like I'm going to show you something. And I just felt like I was being shown everyday life, how it used to be, if you know what I mean. Mm. So uh, I, I do think it was an ironic title mm. um, for sure, but I quite liked it. Nice. Um, I mean, I don't know, in terms of like a mantra, to me, I feel like these clothes are being marketed to people who might not necessarily have the most money in a way. Like, you know, yeah. this isn't like, you're not like watching like a Prada show, you know, where like the customer has to be of, well, generally the customer tends to be someone who is quite wealthy. Right. And I feel like one of the things that Diesel has kind of like, well, at least what it's trying to do here, it seems anyway to me, is that it seems to be marketing itself to people who, um, you know, are gonna be in their kind of like early, the late teens, early twenties. And a lot of the style and a lot of the things that they're referencing, and I feel like a lot of the um, people who they're going to be trying to appeal to be appealing to, you know, are going to be people who uh, don't necessarily have a lot of money and a lot of, um, <laughs> I don't know, like people who don't necessarily have like jobs in a way. This, this is, I feel like this is being marketed to kind of like young people who were like going clubbing and who, you know, were kind of like are, you know, interacting in society in a way that doesn't necessarily feel quote unquote professional or quote unquote, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like, in any sort of sense of authority. To me, this feels quite fun. So I feel like if it is going to be about a kind of a democracy in a way, I feel like the key for this success will almost be a kind of like a Telfarian sort of idea of success, mm. which means that it's accessible to all and like legitimately accessible to all. Mm. Then it's like, put that mantra on the sticker because really we want someone who is like 21 and who works in a restaurant to be able to buy a pair of jeans and be like, these are my fab diesel jeans. If they can't do that, then it's like, uh, then actually like, what's the point? Yeah. So I think that's such an interesting point because actually when I was seeing a lot of the collection, I was like, this will fit into the wardrobe of someone who loves to shopping. If mm. you know what I mean? Yes, exactly. Who's already doing that and just wants like a really glam piece to go with everything else they have. So I think that's a really poignant point. 
Yeah, for sure. Well, I just like uh, watching a lot of it, you know, kind of seeing the diamante, seeing the satins, seeing everything like that, seeing the washes, seeing the kind of the restitched stuff. To me, that looks like what a lot of people, you know, are kind of like going to kind of like, you know, kind of like going to like Camberwell or going to Streatham or going to like East London to go find in markets and charity shops and kind of like eBay and Depop and all that sort of stuff. Like people are kind of craving yeah, this sure. overworked denim. And so what Diesel has done has kind of presented it um, to us in a way that means that it's slightly more accessible or it's like it's slightly easier to find. But I don't, and one of the things I did want to ask was whether anybody had any idea of what the price points were on these clothes. Because mm. I think right now we're saying, oh, these are fab, fab, fab. But I think... Affordable. But I think if they're not necessarily affordable, are not necessarily affordable to people who they want to be dressing, it's not going to be like a Prada or even like a GmbH, which feels slightly more luxurious. Yeah. You know, these are clothes that you're going to, be wearing to like you know you want to be able to like wearing them to work you want to be like rolling around the floor of like a party with your friends wearing you know what I mean you're not necessarily like going out to dinner although you can do that as well but these clothes should be like rough and ready and fun and mm -hmm. if they're not affordable in that way then I think that's where they might find issue. Was that a part of the reason why you weren't too keen on the, the Argyle Diamante exits because they felt maybe they felt a little too restrictive and a little too like man this doesn't make sense for this world. Oh, what me you <laughs> oh i oh no i no i love like the more like sparkle like the better like honestly like watching this collection i was you know kind of going through and i could wear so much of this and want to wear so much of this like i find so much of it so alluring hmm. and so um appealing but you know going back to something like diamante it's like the price will determine whether someone just goes to diesel yeah. and buys that or whether they get 399 rhinestones from ebay and do it themselves in a pair of jeans oh, do you know what I mean? Like that's going to be the decider because the look is shoppable and wearable without having to go to Diesel. So oh, it's yeah. up to Diesel to kind of make sure that, you know, people are going to them instead of going somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think Zoe makes a really good point there. I, I'm, I'm wondering the same thing. I'm thinking that there's some really fab pieces like uh, the fitted long um is it maybe an acid wash coat I'm not sure i don't know it by heart yet but um and and then i'm looking at it and i'm thinking like yeah but that's gonna be um i'm not sure if it's that one um but i'm thinking is it is it that's gonna be for on and and the one with the with the um with the argyle uh as well because glenn he loves an argyle and there's a yet yeah, the longer for, uh, to the right yet yeah, that one to the right um yes that one i'm thinking that that's that that's definitely going to be a really high price point right and 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 maybe fairly so but then i'm wondering is it is it the same customer um i think he'd be smart to to have a range of customers. I think you could mm, like, yeah, yourself sure. in, this co in this collection to a range of customers, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and sort of push that whole, obviously Diesel is sort of like a luxury high street brand, but to push that a bit more like, you know, how you said Zoe Telfat have done that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and I think that would still be accessible to the right customer, like acceptable to the right customer and accessible to the right customer, so. For sure. And actually, I'll be really interested to see how they progress and how, I mean, forgive me for saying this word, is it, would it be activations? I don't know whether that's like the lingo or not, but the ways in which they kind of utilize, um, you know, kind of marketing and the ways that they kind of utilize things, you know, kind of like finding certain people to kind of come and represent the brand. I'll be, interesting to, I'll be interested to see who the first people are who are kind of publicly representing Diesel. Because um, mm -hmm. I think, and I think, Judging from the collection, I feel like they might have chosen smartly. And I think that'll be, it'll be really exciting to see what the diesel world looks like. Because, you know, you think of, again, Telfar, you think of kind of, I can think of a couple of people who really come to kind of like represent that brand, you know, off the top of my head and think of like Ian Isaiah. And already it becomes mm -hmm. more covetable because Ian is one of the faces of Telfar. Do you know what I mean? And so similarly with something sure. like this, I'll be really interested to see who ends up becoming kind of a face for diesel. Um, and seeing how they do that. But I think that when we're talking about Telfar, the accessible pricing point is with the handbags. Yes. But with mm -hmm. the clothing and the shoes, we're going way up. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily 
this same price point or the the like the word democratic it's been used in the in the press releases and in the interviews surrounding this collection as well um 950 euros for uh, a coat is not democratic it's not so so i think we should kind of it's it's difficult to compare the the the, the Telfar slogan, um, it's not for you, it's for everyone. Mm. Um, it, it really goes for the, the handbag, I think, um, if we're talking about price, if it, that just relates to the price, because I'm a huge Telfar Clemens fan, but um, uh, I think that for the other things, the price point is a, is a lot higher than the other product. Um, Do you think that, can Zoe, uh, Zoe your, your point being that it's best case scenario from kind of a marketing, a marketing context. Mm -hmm. But like, I think that we, we can't forget that this is a lifestyle company, you know, like at the end of the day, you have to appeal to, so you have to serve so many masters with this, with, with this type of business. And, you know, just thinking in the States, like our diesel shop was on one corner across the street, wasn't urban outfitters. So the kids would go to urban and then the parents would go to diesel and weirdly Erica Badu would go to, Urban Outfitters, that's a whole nother story. And so like, it's weird, but like, yeah, it's a whole thing. But, um, you know, it just, it shows the scope to where it's like, this is a lifestyle company that can be, we, you know, we have our fragrances, we have underwear, mm. we have a bit of things. And also, yeah, in terms of Zoe, what you were saying about who will represent, you know, who, who, who will represent the, 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 the campaigns, they generally don't do that. I know for Machete's did, I think his first campaign was with Brooke Candy. Mm. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how Glenn, you know, navigates the water, so to speak. Like, will he will he pull a Rihanna into things, or will he just keep it with like models? Well, when I was going, when I saw that the show was being promoted, I saw one stylist who I know kind of promoting the show as an ad. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, she's called Lee Trigg. She's really, really fab. She um, she's hey. worked, she's really, really major, and she's um, done a lot with Shy Girl. And then immediately, it's like. Okay, well, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes perfect sense because you know you kind of look at Lee's work and you look at the content of the collection and you can immediately kind of seeing some mm. of these pieces going into Lee's world. Just mm. as much as you could, I mean, you could see Shy Girl being an ambassador. Oh, yeah. You like, could see Arca just killing it in these clothes. Right? Do you know what I mean? I mean, I feel like we should maybe all just like uh, offer some creative consultancy for them if they'd like mm -hmm. us to come on board because it would be a really fun job, no doubt. Um, but yeah, no, I feel like. There is definitely a flavor um, which uh, you could attribute to a lot of different people, but perhaps you're right. Perhaps maybe they won't do that so soon. But I would, after seeing Lee's post, I was kind of interested to see how that would maybe extend into something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Glenn has hinted that he would be working with um, artists um, for Diesel rather than. Um, looking for collaborators or other brands to work with. He was talking about, I'm just gonna focus on artists. So there there should definitely be something there. Um, but I also think that Glenn is really stepped into, yeah, maybe some more aspirational than No Shade to Brook Candy, but um, more, I, I would love to see it go the more Arca, if to more kind of um, way than uh, and a shy girl kind of way than, than what it was before. Um. Let's let's talk about Glenn Martins a bit. So with with Y Project, it's obviously identifiable. You know what you're going to get, or you don't but you understand it when you see it. He operates with kind of, you know, proper complicated concepts and a twisted elegance and like kind of a, a fucked up but fun mind. Do we think that he did a solid job of making, the, of, of kind of cleaving the Y projectness of what we know him for and giving us an, a, a new side to maybe himself and, you know, reframing Diesel? Or do we just see this as like, oh, it's just another Y project, but with denim. It's Y project, but with selfages. Um, I don't see it as that at all. Um, I think uh, I think he's been able to kind of translate his vision very effectively um, to Y Project. But then I also think about that incredible collaboration that he did with UGG that was mm -hmm. like the most humorous and most kind of fun 
yeah. thing that I'd seen in such a long time. I mean, a thigh high heeled Ugg boot is just like the most like fabulous kind of ridiculous thing ever. And I was gagging when I saw it um, when it came out, however many years ago it was. And I feel like this, I feel like this collection feels very authentic to what he's doing, but it also feels like something, to, you know, it doesn't, I'm not saying this in a shady way, Way, but it doesn't necessarily feel like Glenn Martin could have designed it in a way. It feels like someone who is tapped in and it feels like someone who is um, in tune with what is going on right now has designed it. And then when you find out it's Glenn Martin, you go, oh, okay, so now I kind of understand why that's straight to that side and I understand why that's doubled and I understand why X, Y, Z. But um, if I was to look at it immediately, I wouldn't go, it's the guy from Y Project. But then when yeah. you find that out, things start to reveal, in my opinion. Hmm. Rona, what do you think? You, you, you. Um, I love how there's just like you know subtle, crazy hints of like madness in the collection. Like obviously the the there's jeans with boots in them, right? With the boots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just you know that made me cackle, and I was like, yeah, obviously that's Glenn Martin's. Um, obviously you know all the twisted bias cuts is you know that's that's something that he does a lot anyway. But I don't think I think he has stayed true to Diesel, which is, which is nice. Mm. Um, yeah, it's nice to see. I, I also think this last section here, actually, which was the Mars section, where the clothes are a bit more, they're a bit more in a weird way what I expected to see. Um, mm. not, not from Glenn's typically, but almost what I'd imagine they would want to put, like Diesel would want to push out from a main, so, like line collection that's what yeah. I would have envisioned them doing so I thought it was interesting that that section was added in because I feel like I don't know you know I don't know how the conversations go but I almost feel like that was like a safe banking mm -hmm. if you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> it was like cool let's still do the stuff that is going to like market itself to that sort of like elegant luxury uh which I feel like Diesel has been moving towards in the, the you know the previous years you know mm. this definitely feels a bit like retrospective to me in take yeah i feel um like the, uh, for me it was of course immediately recognizable as as glenn there's also like uh, i think this is one of those um knitwear jumpers that is so quintessentially glenn and um but I also feel like this is so so much the right time for him to be at Diesel because he has become himself so masterful with the manipulation of denim and he makes it seem so effortless. Four years ago, it wouldn't have, it, it, it wouldn't have been like this. It wouldn't have looked like this. Um, so I think it's the exact right time um, and like, the jumpers and the, the, then there's this this same knitwear um, jacket which is in the beginning of the of the video um, as well. It's it's so fab. It's so it's so cool as well. Um, uh, so I I just think it's it's this it's a it's a beautiful. It's not a marriage, but it's it's this beautiful hot relationship that's going on right now. I think between um, Glenn and uh, Diesel. Um, which I think is pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. And this, I think the styling of this part of the video is mm -hmm. exceptional as well. Uh, because then when you see the separate looks just in the lookbook, mm -hmm. um, there are some looks that to me are like, what is this doing here? Um, but then I saw pieces again, when I rewatched the video, I saw, pieces styled differently in that video and I that and then I immediately wanted it so yeah that's a good sign <laughs> nice. well we, we we need to wrap up so why don't we end with a, a, a fun question do we think that Glenn Martin's made Diesel feel like a good time let's go around our bubbles um, I'm okay to start first I was actually going to say that I think this is such a timely moment for Diesel to have changed uh, create director in a weird way. I think a lot of the language that was um, being pushed through the press release with an emphasis on like sort of sustainable denim feels refreshing. It's a good chance for Diesel. I think, um, you know, it's always been connected to youth culture, but this particular angle of inclusivity and the sort of like 
genderless fashion that you're seeing a bit more in this collection, um, which I do feel like Glenn's has some sort of authenticity to, to represent, if you know what I mean, um, is, is exciting. So I feel like this feels quite exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think um, to answer it, because the question was, is this a good time, right? Uh, or does, does, does it, it look you, like it? Does it make you feel like you would have a good time? Does it make you, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, it, it really does. And, and that's also, I think, because Glenn is honestly, he himself is a good time. He is, <laughs> um, he's a little bit, it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it, that he's a little bit nutty, but he's he, he has he has such a great sense of humor. Um, he has he's really optimistic as well. Um, he doesn't easily get even though sometimes he has like his twenty jobs um, or, or twenty different houses he has to service. Um, he he remains like calm and 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 optimistic and and just uh, just and he's always whenever you speak to him as well he he's always like two days ago there was a party or he's always looking he he still re, or he really enjoys himself as well so and i think i think that translates nice. i um i think 100 percent. you know it makes me think of a good time you know thinking about you know thinking about the clubs and uh, you know my experience of london clubs and maybe a few kind of like new york clubs and what the girls are wearing to the london clubs this feels like something that a lot of people will want to wear and it feels like something that i'm going to see a lot of once the clubs reopen um and i think that's great i think that that's really exciting i know that i you know, kind of deign to wear a lot of this. This makes a lot of sense for how I like to dress. And actually so rarely do you see that happen kind of right in front of your eyes. Maybe you see something where you're like, oh yeah, that's kind of cute. Like maybe one, two things, but it's very rare to kind of see something that feels so Moorish and so comfortable and in like so much volume, like there being so much to kind of enjoy. Um, and yeah, no, I mean, I predict that by the time cross fingers the kind of you know the clubs and parties reopen next year i have a feeling that we'll be seeing a lot of this out and i think it's fab and i think it makes perfect sense for that so yeah i hope so perfect so since we're all in agreement that feels like a good time let's end on a good time let's end on a good note <laughs> <laughs> so um round of thanks to to all the panelists and thank you all for watching and for more extensive fashion week coverage Pump it over to showstudio.com. If you're watching via Show Studios YouTube, throw us a like, a comment, maybe subscribe, and we will see you next time. Take Bye. care.